Hey. Okay, I'm trying to think of like. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like new ways to get on this so I'm not like messing with myself or whatever. But um, I just wanted to go ahead and say hey, y'all. Um, we're going to be interviewing the Pink Wednesdays. So I'm going to go ahead and get him in here. So that way we can get started. Uh, hey, Sabrina. Hey, girl. Okay, so, hey. Hey, oh, no. Hey. Oh, what's up, hey. What's up? <laughs> all right, all right. Everything good, everything good. Everything all right, cool. so, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the lovely Pink Wednesdays. I'm from Huntington Beach, California. Alexander Reyes is one of the unique one-member band, the Pink Wednesdays. Seeks to create a variety of tunes, ranging from chai tune 8-bit music. Was that right? Chip tune, a bit, yeah. Okay, okay. Pop rock and acoustic folk guitar. So aside from being a one fit, being the face behind the Pink Wednesdays, he's also a main vocalist and guitarist for the Medicated and Scared. I'm an indie rock and funky bass line inspired four member band originating from Hyada Heights, California. Hacienda. Hacienda. Okay, see, I know I was going to say that wrong, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> He's from California, y'all. And then started from um, just some high school lovers. So welcome to the Vibe Out Zone, Alexander. Hey, what's up? How you feeling this morning? Afternoon. Oh, my God, y'all. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. What time is it anyway? Uh, California's uh, both a little ahead, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm all right. You know, just been, just been around 2020. You know how it is. Yeah, 2020 is pretty garbage. Yeah. Pretty garbage. Pretty garbage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we thought it was the year. It was the year for bullshit. So, no, for real. Yeah, for 2020 real. took away my concerts. It took away my roller coasters. Took away my vacations. For real. Don't, don't I have to wear a mask all the time. But it's okay. Man, I'm on it. It's I'm okay. in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, first and foremost, um, why do you consider yourself a one member band opposed as to being just like an all around artist with a stage name? What? A solo artist. Um, I think it's mostly for like a little bit is um kind of like it's a little bit of a, like a joke. I don't want to say a joke because then it like downplays it. But um, for for one, it's just like it's kind of funny to think of it as a band <laughs> as opposed to just my own music because then it feels like I don't know. It feels like a little bit like I'm giving myself too much credit if I say, "Oh, this is me. This is a solo artist, Alex." As opposed to just, you know, like a one member band where it's like, yeah, it could be the band or it's hard to say. It's mostly yeah. a good joke. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so you used to um, upload, your, upload your music as Squirtleche. Squirtle, uh, Chele. There you go. Yeah, Squirtle Chele. I not, look, I knew I was going to say it wrong. It's just. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'm sorry. Um, oh, I was never good at English, so. I might speak it, but I don't know how to really talk it. Um, but what was the inspiration for that? And then how did you evolve into the Pink Wednesdays? So um, Squirrel Chile just started off as like more of a project where it was like my dipping my toes in the water of just, you know, like, how am I going to start doing this, um, this music stuff? Like, at first it was just me and my acoustic guitar. I had like a gaming headset because I like play a lot of video games, stuff like that. And, um, you know, it was like, let's just write down some tunes. I like music. I like writing music. So let's we'll see where it goes. Okay. Okay. And then, um, so I just wanted, so the Pink Wednesdays doesn't come from, like, we wear pink on Wednesday. Yes, it absolutely does. Okay, because I was like, we wear Wednesday, you know, on Wednesdays we wear pink. And then I was like, I don't want to say that. And him like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it does come from that? Yeah, it but comes that's... from the Mean Girls reference. That is tough. <laughs> that is really tough. I respect. I respect you to yeah. like hear for that. Like that is, that's that's the toughest name. All right, cool. Yeah. So, um, when when you were growing up, what were you like? Like, were you always fond of music? Um, you know, did you kind of like hear some music and been like, yeah, like this is pretty tight, or like what really, you know, what were you like as a child? Because you said you played a video game. So, yeah. how did that transaction? um there's there's a couple of things that go into it um just yeah, like can, real. 
just like uh, Tim from the interview before, he said his uh, his dad was a drummer. My dad was a drummer. Um, he got me into like music specifically. Okay. Yeah. Um, I wasn't very good at drums, unfortunately. Um, I'm still not good at drums, but he got me a guitar really, um, really early on. It was more for my brother, and my brother was like, I don't like guitar, so he gave me it, and then I was like, I love this thing. Okay. So I started learning a good amount of it, um, and then eventually, you know, my dad was just like, hey, you know, just start learning a bunch, like, all that you can do, and then let's see what happens after that, and I was like, cool, and then it just happened, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, so when was the first time you began to like experiment with um, instruments and then your voice as well? Um, I definitely got a huge boost like senior year. A lot of like my friends came up to me and they were like, "Hey, like, are you joining like the men's choir that's coming up?" And I'm like, "Men's choir, like, dude, I kind of <laughs> oh, choir! <laughs> oh, bro, I swear, I feel like everyone's like first. It's like I was in choir and band. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was in band first, and then I went in the choir." All my friends came up to me. It's like you gotta be, you gotta try out at least. And I'm like, I'm not even gonna try out. Like I'm, I'm just not good at like singing. And then yeah. like seven or more people came up to me. It's like, hey, you're gonna do like men's choir. I'm like, fine, God. And then like, <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, I met like the homies, and then they're all just like, oh, dude, it's gonna be great. And men's choir was just like the confidence I needed to like pursue my my singing. I still don't think I'm good at it unfortunately i think there's um some people like around me who are like definitely good at it and i'm like i'm trying to keep up with them yeah and, um, you know after that like right after high school i started experimenting with like a couple chords on uh, my guitar and stuff like that i would, rip, I would write like little ditties on there and then i was like okay time to sit down record what you got let's see what we can do with the trying to make like a song song yeah yeah that's yeah. tight no i feel that because see <laughs> uh <laughs> I used to be in choir, and I was like a soprano one, and then I was like a soprano hey. two. Yeah, I, yeah, but see, I don't, like, I stopped singing, so, like, when my voice matured, and then I started singing again, I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> 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 like, um, like, I went from being, like, a soprano to, like, an alto, so I was like this, I feel like I couldn't sing no more. Like, I did ass, like, my boyfriend all the time would be like, you need to get featured with me, and I'm like, no, because you sing better than I do. Like, I'm not about to sit here and be on a feature with you and you sound good and I sound like crap. Like, absolutely not. Um, I feel that. So I feel that on, like, a personal level. You're just like, I'm, you know, I'm mid. I'm okay. Two, um, two people in a pot on that one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, so what made you decide to do your music professionally instead of just, or do you kind of still consider it as, like, a hobby? Oh, I, I still totally consider it, like, well, I mean, a hobby in the sense that, like, I'm not out here trying to, like, make everything out of it. Like, um, like most recently, I barely um, quit my job to try to do this, like, pretty professionally. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, but, like. That's a big step. Just, yeah, hey, what's up? <laughs> um, it's still just me in my bedroom, just, like, pulling out random microphones and stuff like that. Yeah. And just trying to you know, diddle, fiddle around, see what goes around. And then, you know, maybe I come up with something cool. Maybe I don't. It's it's hobbies. I think it's a hobby. More a hobby than you would say it's professional. Yeah, and then hopefully one day when when things go good, it'll become professional. Okay, okay. That's that's cool though. Hey, it's a good a hobby's a good start. Whatever makes you comfortable, you know. Um yeah. what would you say your favorite sounds to include in your music would be and then why are they your favorite sound absolutely it's got to be that like the 8-bit chiptune stuff um it's mostly like derivative toward the um like just video games like video games that came out in like the 1980s and 1990s where they yeah. had this like this really old sound it's just like bloops and bleeps you know and um we definitely have some or the pink wednesdays definitely has some like some songs that are just like that you know like uh i mean i don't want to like it feels so weird, like name dropping my own songs. It's so it's super weird to me. But like, but I uh, feel like that makes it real. That. You know, that makes it like, hey, this is like my music. This is. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me apologize. My, uh, this head. uh, this train. <laughs> this train is so disrespectful, y'all. So I apologize. <laughs> this train really don't get look that three times, dog. Three times. So it looks like oh. someone said. <laughs> 
like we can see that you there you know what i'm saying like if you a big ass train For real. anyways um it looks like somebody said what's eight bit chip tune chip tune yeah so yeah, it looks so like someone's it's just, asking it's essentially like video game music where it's like that old really old timey synth it's just like you know square waves cell waves i don't know if everyone is like into that stuff but you know, it's just a really old timey like video game music. Things that sound like the Mario Brothers theme. Like Bro, Mario Brothers is good. Boom, there you go. I'm a fan of Mario sounds, okay? I'm a fan. Uh, <laughs> I used to play Crash Bandicoot. I was pretty tough, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the hook. That's where it is. <laughs> I was tough. I was real good. I play Mario Kart sometimes, but my boyfriend and my friends be cheating, so I don't play with them. <laughs> Because there's no loyalty in this house. <laughs> there's none. Um, what would you say that you value? Like, do you value lyricism over instrumentals? Or would you value instrumentals over lyricism? And then why would you for either one? That's, that one's hard. Oh, my God. Um, although I do like lyrics, like, there are some lyrics that, that can like hit hard you know things that like you're just like holy crap like really putting you resonate like, with it yeah yeah putting your expression into like a really like coherent like coherent like sentence is like insane to me you know where it's like especially if it relates to other people where it's like boom 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 and other people are just like holy shit he said that you yeah. know um definitely I would say that's the cool thing about lyrics but instrumentals like if you just have like, there wouldn't be music without the instrumental, you know? You have, like, mm -hmm. a poem, or, like, you have, like, some some cool stuff, obviously, but, like, without the actual instrumental, you wouldn't have, like, the song. Yeah. And um, I want to say I'll probably value the instrumental a little bit more, but, like, to really make it a song, you got to put in those lyrics that just hit hard and just, you know, where is that? Okay. All right. So how... Did you meet the medicated and scared bandmates? All right. And um, then, who were the high school lovers? <laughs> who, were, um, who were the low high school lovers? And then, how did that make y'all involved to being bandmates? So, uh, we all met in high school. Uh, it was um, two of the members started before I had joined them. So they went through like a couple like different, they went through a couple different like bandmates before they got to me. Um, what okay. happened was I went to Michael, my, my singer, my guitarist, or my, my singer, my bassist, excuse me, my singer, my bassist, um, he was a men's choir with me. So, you know, we totally got like super into it like there, we became like really good buddies. Um, him and I had some beef beforehand and then men's choir came around and we're like, all right, let's squash that beef, you know? And then, um, you know, we added each other on, like, Snapchat and stuff like that. He started the band before I was in it, like, three years before I was in it. And um, eventually, they just came up to a point where it was just two of them. And they were like, you know, screw it. If it's just two of us, it's just two of us. I don't, they didn't care, you know? Mm -hmm. So they wanted to just start, like, recording things. And um, I was, like, on Snapchat and stuff. I went to um, Golden West College for, like, um, recording engineering, which okay. was, like, pretty cool, you know? Yeah, they had yeah, a whole studio tight. in that in that junior college, dude, it was insane. Like sixty thousand dollar console, which was like in a community donated. college. In a community college, dude. I would have pulled donated. up. Like, what's good? Y'all trying to sign yeah. me, or can I borrow this sometime? I can give y'all studio money time. You know what I'm saying? Like, just let me. Dude, one we track. Heard that like we're in a studio like every week, but it was designed to like teach you to make your own music at home. So it okay. was like. It was pretty, like, pretty dope. Anyway, like, I was on my Snapchat story. I pulled up a couple of things, and I was like, hey, in the studio again. Ain't that cool? And um, Michael, who's like, hey, dude, like, I'm about to start start doing some, like, recording for my band. Like, can you help us out? And I was like, damn right, I can help you guys out. Yeah. And um, so after a little bit, like, they're just like, hey, all right, let's do this. We recorded a couple of things, and they're like, let's jam out. Like, we haven't jammed out in a really long time. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we jammed out. They talked to each other for like two minutes, and it's like, "Hey, man, so like, do you want to be part of the band?" And I was like, "Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I do." Okay, <laughs> so that's cool. So that's how it all got started. So it all started with a community college studio, 
Absolutely. And then that one time I decided to put something on my story. So like after that, it was all history. That's pretty bad. Okay. That's uh, cool. So how long has it been? So you said high school. When did you know how long has it been since everything started? Uh, we've been a band for about three years now. Yeah, about three years now. Um, we put out our first EP a year ago. So, okay. You know, it's just, yeah, we were just like doing covers for a little bit, and then we just started like shooting the shit on actual, on actual recordings, and it was cool, you know. Okay. I feel I feel it, man. Ooh, on top of um, on so top sorry. of like the band lover or the bandmate thing lovers, that's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's okay, man. Y'all were lovers, y'all were lovers, you know. Oh yeah, it's fine. Boom. Um, enjoy comedy. <laughs> Okay, so I feel like you kind of already touched on the subject of when you you guys became a band and when it would be a good idea. Um, so was it hard at first, like, trying to get everything in tune? Like, did you guys have any complications or was it kind of, you know, it um, seemed like it, it flowed easily? There was, a, there was a good amount of complications. Most of the complications came from mostly, like, how do you say it trying to get like the rhythm down on like what we wanted our sound to be you know okay and now we still don't even like have like a unique sound you know we just kind of like jam out and things and then like oh maybe today's a funk song maybe today's like a like a pop punk song you know doesn't okay. really you know we just kind of like throw things around at okay. first a lot of the recordings went bad you know where um we decided to do something and it didn't work out and then like as soon as that thing didn't work out, like we have this thing where like the morale just becomes like completely like bonkers. And mm -hmm. then after that, it just becomes weird. And then we're just like, oh, should we work on this song still? I don't know, you know. Okay. And then working through that is the hardest. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so would you say that you have any like um, dream collaborations for either the Pink Wednesdays or for the medicated and scared yes absolutely either one i mean i would feel bad because at this point like the pink wednesdays is only me if i say just me then i feel bad for my other people like my other bandmates yeah um, i think our dream collaboration right now is uh, we went to high school with one of our buddies aaron and um aaron is in a badass band now uh, the turnouts turnouts are awesome okay um we've always wanted to work with those guys they're super cool okay mm. okay so what would you say that the influence of being in California, because, you know, I've, I've traveled to California. Tra California is its own, I feel like its <laughs> own little country. Like yeah. you got the United States, Texas is big as hell. And then you got like Ethan, like the East Coast, the West Coast, but then you got California. Because like, yeah. I went to LA and it was a whole different, I, like, I felt like I was in a third world country. Like it was really its own <laughs> its own place you know what i'm saying so how would you say that the environment or the vibe that you get from being in california kind of helps with the kind of music that you put out um definitely um the only instance i can think of right now we have an unreleased song that's kind of like surf rock where it's kind of like totally you know just upbeat but it's like about like weird stuff you know um, <laughs> yeah think about like growlers think well it's like almost like post post like beach boy stuff which is pretty okay. cool uh, on top of that other than music i would say that like our stigma on stage is i would think is like totally californian where you know like we take time to just be like all right y'all what's up you know like <laughs> <laughs> just in between like songs which is like crack jokes and stuff like that we're full of totally dudes and stuff like that absolutely like californian <laughs> Definitely a California vibe. So have you ever, um, like, done a show in California, like, uh, locally? Or have you been able to kind of, um, like, uh, get in relations with other people and been able to kind of go to where they're at? Um, unfortunately, we've only been doing things, like, around our cities. Um, like, things around, like, Santa Ana, um, in Hacienda Heights. Uh, we played, like, a couple bars. A couple of people were, I think that. Um, I'm sorry, I was reading chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're good. It looks like someone said they're so entertaining to watch. So I don't know if they talk about us, yeah. talk about y'all, but whoever's That's entertaining, y'all better go off. Good, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we, we played a couple of shows here and there. 
Um, unfortunately, we were supposed to play the House of Blues around March, but because 2020 wanted to be 2020. Fucking COVID, yeah. dog. I'm telling dog. you, like, COVID is a, is a bitch. It's a sorry yeah. little bitch. I don't like COVID. I ain't a fan. Just because I feel like there's so much that was taken away, not even just, you know, music, but... Yeah, so much, a little bit. So, so the House of Blues, that would have been so fucking tight, though. Like, that would have been a really... The House of Blues. Like, it was going to be so good. <laughs> but the House of Blues, dog. Like, the, the House of Blues, like, that would have been a flex you could have had for the rest of your life. I but know, it's okay, because, you know, hopefully COVID will take us ass out somewhere. Uh, for real, sometime, dude. You know, and then y'all will be able to do that, because that's really tight. That's really tight. Um, do y'all, like, ever like look into i guess like maybe hosting a like uh, like running an airbnb and hosting a party or mm. i know covid's a thing so you have to social distance but maybe being able to like be out or host like an outside party um yeah we've done we've done one outside party and i think it was like yeah. one of our best shows. it's been it's been like one of our best shows it was at our drummer's house and um thank god for his family because his family is like fucking amazing um you know we had that that party right then it was for our album release party and i think that was like one of our favorite shows uh, okay someone in the chat matt carlson who was like totally in here he helped us out he was i feel our, like i need to do this hold on like this this is a california <laughs> thing right yeah it's like hang loose but i wish i totally beat all the time I feel like my fingers are too fat to do that. But it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe if I do it from like this distance, they don't look as fat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we do, we posted a couple parties just to like play. But, you know, most of the time we'll um we'll see what's up. We'll play at other people's parties. Um, but yeah, mostly parties. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so do you ever go through like a, a music block or like a writer's block or um, you know, do you ever get in those moments where you just feel discouraged? Yeah. Half of, the, half of the time, I feel like I'm constantly in, like, writer's block. It's more of a, like, a stroke of genius that comes out whenever, like, I do write a song where it's, like, I'm it's constantly. <laughs> it's just, like, you sit down, you're, like, I'm gonna write music today, and then you're just, like, there for, like, an hour, and it's, like, it's not today, and then you go do something else. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Until, like, one day, like, one day in March, you're just like, oh, I'm gonna write a song, and then you come out with something, and you just keep going, just keep going, and it's like, oh, there you go, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, 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 I feel that. So, do you give yourself a break then, like, if you're going through this, and you're like, mm, I'm not gonna write this today, like, do you stop and try to, like, reach out to maybe your bandmates, or reach out to someone, like, you know, another local artist, or someone that you may look up to, and be like, hey, you wanna help me out? Because right now, like, my brain's not functioning how I need it to, and I'm kind of in this little block. Or do you kind of give yourself like a, I'm gonna just <laughs> put this shit down for tomorrow. Um, I definitely think that uh, my my co-writer, my my roommate Michael, he's not here right now, but like definitely when him and I like, when him and I just like bounce off each other, those those are our best songs for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like, whenever I feel like I'm just like, okay, I can't do this song anymore. It's just not for me. I just, you know, just like Michael, do it, and then he'll do it, and then like <laughs> Michael, <after> that, help, <laughs> help, Michael. <laughs> oh man, okay. yeah. So definitely like that. Okay, and then um, what would you say that you do to find like how to create? Like, what do you like? Maybe watch some YouTube. Do you maybe like listen to some of your old music? Like, what do you do to be able to find out what kind of better helps you? be able able to create your music it usually comes off of like a like a sudden like obsession through a band you know where it's like okay. i'll find something i'll be like yo dude have you heard this band and then me and, like me and my buddies would just be like yeah i heard they're like aren't they cool he's like yeah and we just start getting obsessed with that band and it's like why don't we write a song that sounds like them and then like hopefully we don't like you know what do you like plagiarize anything but like, uh -huh. there's a point where it's like, yeah, they have a groove like this, they have a vibe like this, and it's like, yeah, let's do that. And then like, we end up coming up with something, and we're like, okay, and then we just add on our things that we have, you know? We have like a go-to okay. like drum pattern and stuff like that, and we like, put the go-to on, and then like, essentially okay. it becomes 
a, a song that we have, you know, like a Medicaid and Scare song or a Pink Wednesday song. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's what's up, you know? Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. So then who would your top five musicians be? Top five musicians? Oof, that's going to be a hard one. Um, I'm going to see if I can get them off, like, I'm just going to name the first ones that come in my head because then that's gonna, just going to make me feel better because I'm going to, like, overthink it. Okay. Totally. Okay. Um, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters because he's awesome. He's badass. He can play every instrument, and he's Dave Grohl. Um, Haley <laughs> Williams because Haley Williams is Haley Williams. She's gorgeous. She sings so well. She's got she's got really good, like, songwriting abilities. Um, come with Lisa. Sinister Gates from Events Unfold. He's a badass guitarist. He's like insane in the membrane. <laughs> He's awesome. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. maybe we are. Oh. Okay. Um, let's see. I can't think of a fifth. Uh, I'll come back to the fifth one. Let's see. Here. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fair. Um, so who inspires you? Like, what would be a musician that inspires you and the craft that you make and how you go about making music? Like, do you like the certain way that somebody maybe uses their lyrics or lyrics? Do you like a certain way that somebody uses maybe certain instrumentals in their music? Like, who would be what inspires you to create the music that you create? All right. As soon as you said that, I thought of, I thought of my, my number one. My number one should have been Rally Richie. If you ever, if you ever heard Rally Richie. He's the shit. Like, um, he played Grey Worm on, um, on Game of Thrones. And okay. He, like, yeah, and he has, like, a rap career, like, no one's, like, business, dude. Like, it's a re he's, he's got flow, dude. And he's British, so it's, like, even cooler. It's kind of like... Bruh, yeah. I love British rap. Love British rap. I know this is, like, off topic, but definitely <laughs> love, like... I'm a Absolutely. fan. Yeah, I'm a big like, ass fan. With like the British accent, you just get like a timbre in your voice that's just like I instantly feel like I'm a badass. Like I instantly feel like you can't tell me shit when I listen to this music. If you say something like I really don't give a fuck because I'm a badass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah Rally Richie, if you Rally Richie's amazing. Absolutely. Um, yeah, if you have time, you should listen to him. Um, okay, definitely we'll check into that because I, <laughs> I haven't heard of him, but I feel like I need to because you're over here like definitely. Absolutely, dude. It's it's amazing. <laughs> the Willy Wonka. <laughs> that's a good name. <laughs> dude, that's the jam. Um, yeah, like definitely uh, Rally Richie is definitely like super inspiring to me. The way he writes his lyrics is like almost in a, how do you say it? Like a very realistic way where he okay. doesn't like sugarcoat. Like he embellishes he embellishes most of his like his doubts or his like how do you say it just things that are like real people aren't thinking about you know like Katy Perry will tell you to roar like a million times but Rally Richie's the only one who's like I don't like growing up and this sucks and it's like wow that's deep stop <laughs> you know? Bruh, honestly being an adult is shitty dude being an adult real. is shitty when we were younger and we saw adults I used to think like I can't wait to be an adult but they ain't tell you how your ass gotta pay bills they ain't tell you how your ass have to have good credit to be able to afford nice things. They ain't oh, tell yeah. you how you could be late on payments. They ain't tell you how you <laughs> feel like you got to work at eight, at eight to five just to get by. Like, they ain't tell oh, you yeah. all that shit when you was growing up. So being an adult is shitty. I agree with that. I yeah, agree with absolutely. the statement. I hate it. I'd rather go back to being a kid, <laughs> living off my mama, you know. Absolutely, yeah. Um, as soon as I started listening to him, he's got a he's got an album called "You're a Man Now, Boy," and that that just hits different. Like I don't know, it was crazy. It was absolutely okay. crazy. Okay, I'm gonna have to definitely listen to him because I feel like I've seen everyone's comments like he's amazing. I'm like, all right, well, let me yeah, make myself great. hip enough to know who this amazing person is. <laughs> um, would you have any suggestions to anyone that is thinking of wanting to release? their own music online um it's way easier than you think first of all super easy i have my my um my music on top of my band's music on spotify apple music deezer um iheart radio it's really easy i mean mm -hmm. i think i pay 
twenty dollars a month just to have them all on there, and then like okay. you get proceeds. Yeah, and you get proceeds from that. You get a hundred percent of the proceeds of like streams that go from there. So like to yourself immediately. So it's like okay. And on top of that, if you're just like, hey man, I've got ideas, but I don't know how to execute them. If you don't have like the studio quality, if you don't have the gear, don't even care about that stuff. Don't care about that stuff right now. Just start. Just start. You know. The <laughs> train. Bruh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really gonna like have to like. I'm thinking of going to like a Starbucks or something and being <laughs> because this train is so disrespectful. <laughs> like I want to go outside and get a blowhorn and just. Hold it, compete it. With it. <laughs> which i mean it probably wouldn't work at all whatsoever anyways but it's like you're so loud dog like we see you like you have the little things that come down that are blinking red like we know that you come in you like, don't have on. to keep blowing your little Rain. horn he probably got low man syndrome i'm convinced whoever be driving that that train got low man syndrome <laughs> because <laughs> i'm talking like from the beginning it's just like <laughs> We see you, dog. We hear you. It's no problem. Oh, come on. You're a big thing, dude. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, anyways, I apologize about the train again to anyone that's just now joining or is on here and has been on here. This train is disrespectful. So I apologize <laughs> in the little man syndrome's problem. Um, just extra. If I catch him outside. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, Lil, Lil Ray in the train. Like, that's how I feel like Lil I should Ray introduce myself. Train. Like, Lil Ray in the train. Like, that would make it be featured on here sometimes. Like, that would make an excellent children's book. There you go. You know what? You might be onto something. Cause I have a friend <laughs> that's a writer. I have a, I have a friend that's a writer. I could be there like, hey, we could make a, we could collab. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can collab. Whoa, let's go. <laughs> um, but okay, okay, that's cool. So, have you, um, traveled anywhere like is there any city or anywhere that you i mean you're in cali so i feel like you kind of already have a west coast influence and being able to have that part of like you know monumental cities la um san francisco mm -hmm. but is there anywhere that you would like to go to to even just market with people getting in relations with people um or even like do a show at i would think if well, because all the networking happens here anyway, because it's like the closest like studio city, you know, Hollywood and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I guess it would be most like, it'd be the best to be here anyway. But if I were to like the tour, I would hope to at least make my way up to like New York. Cause like, okay. I mean, everyone wants to see New York. Well, if you're on like one side of the coast, you want to see the other side of the coast. Like. <laughs> definitely. I feel like that's definitely how it is. Cause I lived in Georgia and everyone's like, I'm trying to go to Cali. And I lived <laughs> in Cali and maybe because like when I lived in Cali, where I was at was like super fucking buns and everyone was super rude. And this one lady like called me a stupid Mexican and I'm not even Mexican. So I was kind of just like distraught. Cause I was like, I might be Hispanic, but I will beat your old white ass. Excuse so. me old lady yeah. but she was a white lady so she was disrespectful um i assume orange county it, it was just like i held the door open for her she was like fucking mexican i'm like bitch i <laughs> throw this door on you like don't talk about me but it's okay anyways we're off topic it's my little <laughs> let me get back to myself um so new york so anywhere besides new york did you want to go like out of the country Oh, uh, I'm not sure about that. I think I think I'm just like a scaredy. I'm a scaredy cat, so like going out of the country scares me. Um, okay. I've been out of the country like a little bit when I was a kid, but that's pretty much it. And all I can remember is that um, Puerto Rico is really good, even though it's not technically out of the country. It's fucking cool over there. Um, I'm Puerto Rican, so what's up to hey, my boy? Hey, let's go. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Puerto Rico is fucking is beautiful over there, and. Um, just the Bahamas, I think. The Bahamas are just it's paradise over there. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so I know that you live in California. Have you have you been in California your whole life? Yes. Yeah. So you're born and raised in Cali? Born and raised in California. Hey, Daryl. Hey. <laughs> born and raised California, like LA County mostly, and then I moved to Orange County. Yeah. So is Orange County, like, is it easy for you, like, if you were to go out and maybe go to the, to the market, to the market, if you were to, like, go out and be like, hey, 
I'm in this band. Will you listen to us? Check us out on SoundCloud. Are people like, it'll get the fuck out of my way? Or is it kind of like, yeah, like, I'll check you out type of thing? Um, I, I honestly, I'm really bad at networking. So, like, I actually haven't <laughs> gone up to people and just be like, hey, I'm in a band. Like, I just assume they're just not going to like it anyway. So, like... <laughs> I really well, why have, do you have that mindset? People ain't gonna like your band. I don't. I just. I don't. Wanna, I just put the music out. Like, <laughs> you know. Um. Hopefully, what we really do is like, we try Damn. to find gigs. Orange County like, trash. Orange County is trash. Yeah. Orange County hella they, trash. This is what I'm telling you. Like people that. Okay, hold on. So, let me see. You got some questions. So it looks yes. like. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is a. It is a mean girl thing, Daryl. It it's is a Mean Girls music. reference, which is super tight, which is why we fuck with this, okay? Yeah, I've um, been, I've been like, about that one. What influences have California had on your sound? Oh, yeah, we, we covered this one. Um, so, We've been covered this one, but they may have just now joined, so we'll, yeah. you know, we'll so, enlighten y'all. We do have, like, a name of our band, Medicated and Scared. Shout out to Michael and, and Nick. Um... We have like an upcoming song coming up. It's kind of like surf rocky, so we got like that whole like totally California aspect to it. But more than anything, our like our influence on stage is absolutely Californian. Where it's like, you know, we'll come up on stage and people will like have a good time, but every now and again we'll just like come up and just stop the show and be like, "Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on?" You know, so like, "What's up?" Totally do, guys. And then we just start playing the show. <laughs> <It's my turn. laughs> okay. Cool. 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 <laughs> Um, if y'all have any other questions, you know, feel free to just comment. Let us know. Absolutely. I don't, you know, but I'm I'm really so. You got the reference for the Pink Wednesdays from, from Mean Girls. Girls. Is that one of your favorite movies? It's um, unfortunately, I don't watch it as much as like I should. Um, what happened was this is I like the story a lot. Um, just because like I worked at. I worked at like a thrift store for a really long time. Oh, and, um, shout out to any thrift stores, okay? Hey. I got this I at a thrift store. Hey, let's go. I, mean, I got some really. Hold on, I'm about to show y'all my shoes. I'm gonna listen, but I'm about, <laughs> I'm about to show y'all my shoes. Hold on, cause we talk about this one. For sure. Um, yeah, so let's, I worked at like a thrift store for a really long time. Uh, we didn't have a uniform, so like we're just trying to bring up like morale a lot of the times. So. Okay. Um, at the thrift store, we're just like, well, you know, we don't have a uniform. What should we do? And I'd be like, bro, on Wednesdays, we wear pink, right? On oh, Wednesdays, then... <laughs> we wear pink. I wore my pink shirt today to work. I, I should have worn my pink shirt today. Like, I it's did. been a little I bit wore... since I went out. I wore my pink shirt today. So that's our agreement on work. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. So all of us are in the front, we wear pink on Wednesdays. Absolutely. But... And like, anytime there was a, a show on Wednesdays, we wear pink, obviously. Obviously, because what you mean? Like, yeah. we have to be So, we were talking about thrifting. I got these shoes. Hey, oh, snap. Where's that? <laughs> That's cool. I got these what shoes. Brand are those? I don't know. Some really expensive brand because we looked it up and it came up at like $300. That's but enough. it's like Yosho. Hold on. Yoshi. Yosh. I don't know <laughs> what these are. Because it's like cut off to where you can see them. But anyways, they're really expensive shoes and I got them for six dollars. Oh hell yeah, dude. So shout out to Tech Sister because that's where I got my shoes. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Daryl. Thank you. Those are my those are my step out shoes. So when I wear those, I instantly feel like a boss. Hell yeah. <laughs> um but okay, so cool, so cool. So um let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and do the little speed round with you. Sure. So the speed round is basically, I like to say, it's just like getting to know um, you. Like if you were trying to like ask your ask a person you like or whatever, like a crush or whatever, like what their favorite things are. So I'm going to ask you questions. You right. have five seconds to answer them. Oh, God. And okay. then after the, yeah. So I'm going to ask you. And then once you don't answer, I'm going to just keep going. So um, yeah. are you ready? I, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Okay, bet. Sounds good. So, favorite animal? Monkey. Okay, favorite season? Winter. Ooh. Okay, no, I'm playing. <laughs> oh, I'm playing. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, what's, your, <laughs> what's your favorite place to be? Uh, ooh. Next one, fast. <laughs> okay, okay, favorite emotion? Favorite emotion? Happy. 
Okay, what is your favorite thing to eat? Lasagna. Okay, uh, favorite <laughs> subject? <laughs> of like school, math, I think. Yeah. I love math. Okay, you said math? I yeah. appreciate that answer. I appreciate that answer because I love math. Hell yeah. Um, Favorite color? Pink. <laughs> On Wednesday. Uh, favorite <laughs> article of clothing? T-shirt. Okay. Favorite song that isn't by you? Oh, it's got to be Riley Ritchie's song. Um, I'm going to say Motions by Riley Ritchie. Okay. And then what is the favorite song of yours? Favorite song of mine. You never really... Oh, there's one that's coming out. It's called Groovy Boy. It's really good. Love it. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so cool. So I love your answers. Those are really good answers. Uh, why did you say lasagna? Lasagna? Lasagna's amazing. <laughs> like, yes. it's like pasta, but it's like, it's like cake pasta. It's That's the problem. It's like cake pasta. You see the, the problem with pasta and cake? It don't sound like it should be in the same sentence. It's amazing. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> Maybe I've just never had good lasagna before. Um, so it looks like someone had asked a uh, bass or guitar, and why is it? Guitar? <laughs> why is it guitar? <laughs> um, I hate to I hate to disagree, but bass bass is funky, dude. You gotta have that funk in there. It's just amazing. I'm definitely a bass person. I hear songs and I'm like, if my car instantly like. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! Like absolutely. <laughs> um. So that's cool. All right. So cool. So do you? Would you say where would you see yourself in the next two years? Even like the next year. The next two years, hopefully out with my friends. I mean, like, come on. Twenty twenty sucks. Cause fuck COVID. <laughs> Cause fuck COVID. Cause fuck COVID. Um, COVID. Yeah. Honestly, right now I'm just vibing. Um. I want to go back to work. Just because, I mean, I quit my job because all this, all this shit sucks. Orange County sucks as fuck. Um, so I had to quit my job, unfortunately. I want to go back to work. I want to see my friends. I want to see my girlfriend. That'd be fucking cool. And then just oh, like. Oh, where where's your girlfriend? She's in, oh, she lives like a couple of cities away. So I don't get to see her very often. And then because we're trying to be as safe as possible, you know, I don't get to like. Yeah, oh, I don't get to see her yeah. as much as I want to. I'm sorry about that. I used oh, to do God. long distance with, uh, yes, this is a COVID hate club. Like, this is a <laughs> COVID club, okay? Yeah, COVID's awesome. a bitch. <laughs> and so was his mama. Um, but I used to, I was in a long distance relationship with my boyfriend, um, and I actually had the conversation, like, I'm very grateful that I moved down here um, before COVID because it, I lived in Tennessee, which. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, you've been everywhere, huh? Okay, listen, I'm like a little <laughs> nomad. I'm like a little nomad. I just like to, you know, know. But my my dad was military, um, so we've been. Okay. I've been from I've been from the West Coast to the East Coast. Um, so, but I hope that you, you know, long distance is hard. I mean, it's not like super long for y'all because no, you're no. in the same state. But you know, not being able to see her as much. So hopefully, you know, COVID does take its ass somewhere else, but here. So that you'll be able, you know, see your girlfriend and be able to go out and, you know, start performing again. Go to the House of Blues. Um, For real. Yes, go to the House of Blues. Uh, it looks like Daryl had asked, what instruments do you like to, or do you play? What instruments do I play? Um, I've got a couple. I main like my guitar. My guitar is usually the ones that I play the most. Um, I do like dabble on bass and stuff like that. I'm not as good as like my bassist. He's badass. Um, okay. Every now and again, I'll pull out the the old MIDI controller, so I'll like do a little bit of these guys, these keys. Okay. Uh, I sing in the shower, so not so well. Uh, <laughs> shower singer gang. Oh, uh, shower singing gang. I'm not very good at drums, although I would like to be, but I'm just not good at it. I used to play tenor sax. I used to play alto sax. Pretty much it. Okay, okay. Yes, definitely positive vibes to you and your girlfriend. You know. Hey, that's the... thank you, Daryl. I love Daryl. He's nice. <laughs> Daryl is great. I'm sorry. I'm a big fan of Daryl. Let's not even get me started. I love Daryl. I'm a Daryl fan. Um, Daryl makes like music. Now. So Daryl also hey. goes by Nova Ultra. 
So while he in here, he's also an amazing artist as well. So definitely positive vibes to Daryl. Thank you for Mr. being on the chat with us, Daryl. I forgot about the kazoo. I also played the kazoo. You played the kazoo? <laughs> okay, thank you, Matt, for letting us know that he played a kazoo. Thank you, Because you was not about to tell us that. Okay, so how long have you... How long have you been playing um, the kazoo? <laughs> um, I don't even know. It, it's, I mean, every time I pull out the kazoo, just because it's so hilarious to pull out, like, cause you'll be in the middle of a show, you know, and you'll play, like, a really badass song, and then, like, I'll turn around for, like, two seconds, no one even notices, and then, like, out in my mouth is a kazoo, and then just play that for a little bit. I don't know, like, three, it's been, like, three years since I've been doing that joke, and, like, I think it hits every time. It's my favorite one. <laughs> okay, so it looks like someone said, can you play something for us live? Can I? Whoa. Uh, sure. Let's, let's see if I got something for hey, you. Hey, this is a fuck, this is a fuck COVID social club. So we, yes, get the kazoo. So, you know, this is going to be like a live, you know, concert. Oh, man. I'm here right. for this. This is great. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. I just put on some new strings, so it's going to look gross, but... I mean, it's, it's on there. I don't know what my kazoo is. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. And I apologize for that. Someone said fantasy. Fan oh, f I can play fantasy. Eh? That sounds cool. Do I have to play the whole song? <laughs> All right, let's play see. as much as you want. Someone said free bird. So we're just here. We're here. Free for bird. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. We're in the, we're in the ceiling, y'all. Jeez. Am I going to mess with I have to, I might have to put it down here. I might. Like, Xbox controller that's totally not on guys. I'm not playing Xbox this way. It's okay. What what games you play on Xbox? I was playing Minecraft with Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So that the Matt that talked about your kazoo. I feel that. Yes. Yeah. We're 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 chilling out there. Mr. Matt, Mr. Thomas, and Mr. Joseph. He was dope. Um uh, <laughs> let's see what I got here. Can you guys hear that? Uh yes. Sorry. I hope to see you soon, you and me, in this other world overseas. It's incredible to be here. We're together now. No more fears, soon we'll know where to go. Come and see, fantasy. Trying to find a lighter so I can be like... Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty much like that for a little bit. I think it's a little repetitive, especially if I don't have the other instruments. <laughs> okay, so I good. mean, you can bring your kazoo out, you know what I'm saying? I wish I, can, I, wish I knew where it was, because that'd be fun. You don't know where your kazoo's at? I don't know. I, I'll check one place I think I know it might be. Yes, <laughs> totally do, yes. And hopefully it's there. But it's been a little bit. Is yes, it that is. Time? Oh, yes. That is the lead singer for the Pink Wednesdays, giving us a Hello. live concert at the Vibe Out Zone. Woo! Hell yeah! Okay, COVID live concert it. 2020. I do not have it, unfortunately. You don't have the kazoo. I don't. I can make trumpet mouth noises. <laughs> you can make trumpet do it. <laughs> Hold on, I think if I'm good today, let's see. Let's see here if I can do it. <laughs> how does that solo go now? I can't remember how the solo goes. I'm just going to do this. I'm here for it. <laughs> I 
That's fun. That was oh, uh, that was definitely that was great. Honestly, I I think we should start having more people like do that live. Like, thank you. Oh, thank yeah, you for doing that. that. Absolutely. Um, I'll play. Well, honestly, if my buddy Michael gets it, oh my god, I'm trying to fix my thing so bad. Great. <laughs> um, yes, the trumpet was going off. Definitely. Phew, thank you. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I think that's what I'm also, you know, I just came up with an idea. So thank you for this. Cause now my, my little, my little noggin is up hey. here working, working a little bit. <laughs> that was yeah. Cool. Honestly, once I get my buddy Michael in here one day when we're free, I, I would love to do a medicated and scared like live show for, for the vibe out zone. That'd be cool. Okay. That, yeah. Hey, listen, don't play because <laughs> if you what? say it, we will def I'm definitely going to take you up on that offer. As soon as soon as he gives me the okay, because I totally participated him with that ass game just now. <laughs> it's okay. He'll be okay. It's fine. It's okay. It's, a, it's no problem. You can tell right. him that we that we volunteered him because you know. Also, shout out to Velvari. He's in. All right, cool. He's here right now. All right, now. cool. So it's great. <laughs> this is great. Uh, shout out to Velvari. Actually, if no one knows, um, I've got like my e or I've got my album on on Spotify and Apple Music and stuff like that called uh, Mom Would Be Sad. Uh, Vilvari, the founder of the Vibe Out Zone. Yes, founder did. of the Vibe Out Zone. <laughs> Shout out to her. Yes. Shout out yes. to her. She did the artwork for that for that album. And I, but I, I love it. Yes. Yeah. Listen, her art goes crazy. Hell yeah. That's, Are you serious? Dude, yes, I bought definitely her like, crazy. I bought one of her commissions and it's like, it's so good. Freaking... Oh my gosh, what is it called? And I didn't even realize it was like based off like an actual photo until I saw it like the other day. It's mm -hmm. super fucking rad. I've, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, she's super. She's definitely dope. Definitely dope. That's what's so, up. Oh, yeah, she's definitely dope. That's super cool. Dang. Yeah. That Shout concert was out. crazy. Now it makes me miss being like at concert. Oh, no. <laughs> but now definitely. I feel if I ever come to if I ever come to California again and you know COVID's not a fucking thing, then definitely want to see you perform live. Definitely with you know hoping and sending you vibes that you are able to you know um, do the House of Blues and be able to jump on that because that's definitely you know that's a flex. It's definitely a flex. Yeah, no, definitely. We we're, we're very bummed out when we weren't being like when we weren't able to do it, but you know it'll it'll come again. I hope. Yes. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, you know, I'm, I don't want it to start wrapping up on us and being crazy because Instagram tends to, you know, not give us a long enough time. Um, yeah. But yes, when COVID's over, we're having live Vibe Out Zone events. So Hopefully, be on the lookout yeah. whenever COVID takes us ass somewhere else up out of this bitch. We're going to be turned because <laughs> I, I, for one, am all about events, especially if there's food involved. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I am a, I am a big I'm there. It's like there's there'll be free food for food. Hm. Go ahead and mark me twice. I'm gonna be there <laughs> twice. <laughs> I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna go take a nap and then I'm gonna come back. Um, but you know, a, a special thank you to you, especially for giving us our first live, you know, mini concert during thank the Vibe Out Zone interview. So that was super dope. So I appreciate you for that. Uh, Ooh, Definitely, anytime. we'll be reaching out to you regarding you and the band, um, the medicated and scared. So that way, we can go ahead and get y'all in on here. That's super dope. Already said he was in it, so gonna be reaching yeah. out to you. But um, so the Pink Wednesdays, aka Alexander Riz, check out his music. He said Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, iHeart Music, iHeart Radio, iHeart Radio, any, iHeart Radio. any major streaming platform. Yes, any oh, major streaming. Okay, and we all love YouTube. I know y'all be watching YouTube. So um, be sure to check out his music. Be sure to follow him. Subscribe on his YouTube. And as always, keep it chill. And we'll see y'all next time on the Bible Zone. Hell yeah. Later, y'all. <laughs> Bye. Bye.